Hello and welcome back to another video. Today here with all the information from the third Solar Club letter for Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown that just dropped. Previously, of course, we got one newsletter about dealerships and workshops and one focused on maps uh, amongst other things like wrecks being included. Videos on both of those on the channel already if you want a little bit more information about those sort of things. Um, but this latest and third letter though, is all about the Solar Hotel, which is the kind of central hub of the map, if you like, where you will start out all of your exploring and heading out for races. So let's get straight into the main bits of information and then take a bit of a closer look at the seven new screenshots included with this newsletter. So the letter first off introduces us to Radiant, um, who are apparently the company behind Solar Crown, who have built the hotel um, and are putting on the whole event itself. There's a couple of interesting pieces of information here. For example, that the hotel's going to have 120 floors, making it one of the top 10 highest skyscrapers in the world. When you first arrive at the hotel, um, you'll be guided to your room by Solar Crown leader person Vivian, apparently, um, who will give you, a, well, basically show you your modern light room, which will be home to things like your wardrobes, change outfits, giving your character a new look, uh, amongst other things. Um, it does say that this first room is only a temporary home, so there is still a chance of houses being confirmed yet, although, as you'll see further through the letter, that gets less and less likely, I think. I'm not really sure that's going to happen at this point, although there's still a possibility it would, so I would love that. Um, but yeah, it kind of says that you'll be working your way um, up through the hotel, um, which is going to be your personal HQ um, throughout, well, for every outing around Hong Kong Island. So that kind of suggests this is always where we'll start and that there won't be other locations. So yeah, I'm beginning to think the Solar Hotel is the only place we'll see. Although looking at some of these images, um, it looks like a pretty cool substitute for houses. Um, although, yeah, it would be a shame not to have them. Um, but yeah, like I say, the rooms do look pretty impressive. So, uh, especially on the higher floors with the views you're going to get out of some of these windows. Then, uh, as ever, there are notes from people like the art director here, from Jerome. Um, about how the hotel's look was inspired by aerodynamics, uh, basically, uh, and how it's 500 metres uh, from the ground to the very top of the spire, making it sort of stand out in the Hong Kong skyline. So it's a super tall building is basically what we've got so far, um, right in the centre of the city with some great views out over the other buildings. Then we get on to the lobby, um, because the hotel isn't just home to your room. There's also a lobby on the ground floor where you'll exit through to start your adventure after you've been shown your room um, and start exploring the island and taking part in all of the races and Solar Crown competition. It's going to be a social hub with the best drivers showcased here, as you see in the image, um, where they put your favourite cars, basically. So if you've there's a player that's particularly highly achieved um, one week um, in any area, whether it's the Frim, which they've confirmed is coming back, the kind of near-miss system, which I think is down here somewhere. Um, but yeah, all sorts of things, or most successful in races, you'll be showcased in here. There's a fourth car hidden over here somewhere, um, which you'll see in a second. Um, but yeah, giving us a glimpse of the lobby. Apparently there'll be more information about around all of that work soon, because it'll also be where you find activities that you can go and take part in, as well as meet other players, and yeah, of course, see the showcased players here. It's not all the hotel offers, though, as you might be able to glimpse up here. Um, there is a clothes store in the building, which is great, but I kind of hope there are more to discover out in the main map, too. There's also a hairdresser and plastic surgeons confirmed returning from TDU2, um, which was some fun little features in that game. Um, but yeah, that's also going to be in the hotel lobby in this beauty salon section. So again, I kind of hope there's stuff to find around the map as well, rather than it just all being in one location, because that'd be kind of a shame, although it would bring a lot of players together in this area, I suppose. Um, yeah, like I said, there'll be four drivers showcased um, with their favourite car displayed for the rest of us to see, um, it says in the letter, which is pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> and there's a valet service at the front of the hotel, so you basically just pull up and then I don't know if you get out and walk in, or if there's just like a cutscene, or... But anyway, that all sounds pretty cool. Um, 
then after this section, um, when they explain about how all the roads basically lead to the hotel, making the outside of it a great place to meet as well, um, we get some notes from Alain Janou, as we always do, the creative director, um, who reiterates basically about how the hotel is designed for interaction and bringing players together, being the sort of main central hub of the game um, for everyone to go and meet in the lobby and around the outside bit with the way the roads are set up to easily access uh, well, towards the hotel and, of course, away, because it's where you always start from. Um, then, basically, there's a little bit here um, about how Radiant have decided to host all the guests in one hotel, which I suspect, again, hints that houses won't be available to buy outside of the hotel, which is a bit of a shame. They haven't said straight up that they won't be, but at this point, I think maybe that's the way they've gone with this, favouring bringing players together all in one location rather than scattering us around the map at our own private houses. They've decided to have a lobby here for us to socialise, a bit like the dealerships and workshops that we had in the previous um, letters, um, but this is the sort of main location and hub for everything, basically. So, yeah, I just hope there's some stuff out around the map, whether it be houses or some of these shops or things. I hope it isn't all just in here. Um, but, yeah, I think maybe they've favoured that. But I could be wrong. We'll wait and see um, whether houses and other locations are confirmed. Of course, dealerships and workshops are, so potentially some of the other things would be. But, yeah, with them in here, I think maybe that won't happen, which, yeah, would be a shame, but we'll wait and see. So then, that's all of the information in the letter itself. Now let's take a closer look at the images, starting with this outside shot from up in the hills, where we can fully see the building's exterior. And if we look around the base of it, um, we can see how all the roads lead up to it, like they explained in the letter itself, with a sort of circular perimeter road, and then these smaller roads leading inwards to a nice big space in front of the hotel, where you could potentially host some car meets and meet some other players and things like that which is presumably where you'll sort of spawn out of the hotel when you first exit. Then we have this one giving us a better view of the front of the hotel from the outside, a bit closer than the previous one, giving us a kind of closer look at how the building's sculpted. It does look pretty incredible from this angle, and how there's this sort of, I don't know, this sort of, the roads leading up to it are actually kind of like bridges over this um, kind of dugout section around the building. Uh, it just looks like a really cool part of the map to me. The third one shows us a sort of living space in the hotel room, which is actually more of a full-on apartment than hotel, really. It's kind of like flats rather than hotel rooms, but anyway, looks pretty incredible, super high-end looking and kind of expensive, as you would expect from TDU, giving us that full supercar lifestyle feeling that the previous games captured so well. Um, it looks like this one also has an outdoor space sort of balcony out there, and just imagine the views. I mean, you can sort of see the skyline out of the window, but Imagine the views from outside when it's not all cloudy like it is here. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I think this one's probably one of the higher end ones that you get later in the game. It looks like it's pretty high up near the top of the hotel. With this one giving us a closer look at another part of the apartment in the bedroom, um, where the wardrobe is situated as well. Again, all in a similar style. I do wonder, actually, if we're going to be able to kind of customise and change the style of our room like we could with the houses in TDU 2. It's not been mentioned, so probably not, but it was just a thought, really. How cool would that be if we could kind of edit the flooring and walling and furniture like we could back in that game? These next two images show us the lobby in the hotel, showing three of the four cars um, from this angle. Like I said, there's one kind of hidden off to the right, um, which you'll see from the second angle in a minute. And it gives us a better look at where the clothes store is up on the top left, the lift to the rooms in the top middle, and where the beauty salon is to the top right. So yeah, where those locations will be down in the lobby um, with the cars uh, below. And then this second one showing us another angle where we get to see what the fourth car is, along with the Huracan Performante, Apollo IE and 911R shown in the other angle. Um, the fourth vehicle is the BMW i8 uh, Roadster. So nothing new uh, in the lobby at all in either image. All of these cars were previously confirmed, uh, but great to see them all in another setting. And finally, right at the end, we get a shot of another room within the hotel with a bit of a different look to it. Again, this kind of makes me wonder if we'll be able to customise our rooms at all, um, but I'm not sure. It could just be that the look inside the rooms changes a bit as we progress to bigger, better rooms 
further up the hotel. To me, this one looks like it's kind of on a lower floor. So potentially the other ones are more high end uh, room than this one is. But yeah, both of them look absolutely incredible. In this particular hotel room shot, if we zoom in on the painting or image on the wall and look down at the bottom, we can see two cars, um, which potentially are either a Lycan Hypersport or a Fenir Supersport on the left, and on the right what looks to be a Lamborghini Gallardo, which I'm super excited to see will be in this game, with Lamborghini of course not being in the second TDU, and the Gallardo being one of my favourite, favourite cars. Anyway, just like the previous two, this has been another really interesting letter getting me super excited for the game again, as it does look incredible, and some of the information they've given us about the Solo Hotel um, really gets me excited to kind of meet players in that lobby and see other people's cars and, well, all of it really. Um, as I always say, they're doing a great job with these so far, keeping us all excited for the game, which hopefully is not that far away at this point. My only concern with this one really is that there may not be any other houses and locations to find outside of the hotel itself, which kind of ruins the exploration a bit and yeah, ruins the discovery element of the game really. And no houses would just be a bit of a shame anyway. It was such a big feature in the previous two titles that it would be kind of a shame to see that substituted for a hotel. Not that they've said that they won't be in the game, but it seems increasingly unlikely to me with how some of this newsletter was worded and how they're kind of making such a big deal out of this hotel in this one. Um, but we'll wait to see. For now, though, this has been a super exciting letter and the hotel does look like it would make a pretty cool substitute for the houses if they're indeed not confirmed alongside it. But yeah, it would be slightly a shame to lose that element, I think, anyway. Um, but yeah, for now, though, it's been a super exciting letter. Um, I already really look forward to the next one and, of course, to the game's release, hopefully later this year. It's getting closer and closer, so we'll probably get some gameplay stuff uh, in the not too distant future, maybe in the next three or four months or so. Um, but yeah, for now that's going to be all, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back with the next video very soon. Mm -hmm.